Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to this diorama tutorial. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at creating a Siegfried inspired diorama base. So to start off, we're just going to take a simple picture frame that's been bought from a discount store. And I've removed the glass plate immediately, naturally enough. And I've also glued the backing MDF plate onto the picture frame itself. And this is going to give us our base to work on our groundwork. Now taking a sharpie, I've just created a very basic outline of the design that I want for our diorama base. It just gives us a way to visualize the different elements. So firstly, we're gonna take some balsa wood. You can buy these online or any um, art or hobby store or a modeling store. And I've basically worked out the dim dimensions of our picture frame here. And these are going to be the border walls, if you like, or the edging. So I'm going to take a very sharp scample here and I'm going to start doing several light scores to cut our balsa strips here to shape and these are going to work as the uh, retaining walls for our diorama base as it's always better to try to step your dioramas a little bit off the base so they can stand out a bit better it's easier to see a diorama detail if it's not blending directly into the base so I'm just going to make sure everything fits so just doing a lot of test measures just slowly but surely just doing lots of measurements and fine adjustments and working to ensure that everything fits well together. So our balsa section is cut out and everything fits. I'm just going to sand down some of the burring that we got from the cutting process. Just taking a soft sanding sponge to do this. So I've just test fitted all our balsa sections, make sure they fit. And now we're going to move on to adding the, the foundation for the groundwork. And for this we're just going to take some blue extruded foam, sometimes it's known as blue foam or uh, insulation foam. And I just have some scrap pieces lying around. You can also use uh, normal um, polystyrene um, foam too, that's the stuff that has like the bubbly texture. I wouldn't use it for many things, but it's, it's good for creating basic groundwork to which we're going to build different plaster layers on top of. So I'm just going to cut this piece to fit into our frame here. Again, this is a very easy material to work with. Just a sharp hobby knife will cut through this like butter. And I'm just going to uh, ensure that it fits in. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I just wanted to fill the basic void of our, uh, our base here. So with my hot glue gun, I've just basically glued in the bottom section and I'm just going to fill in the various voids, just cutting pieces of foam to fit. Again, there are gaps. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, just as long as some of the biggest gaps are filled up because we're going to be putting plaster on top of this. And this is the basis of our groundwork. Now you can see that the balsa foam is quite high, but we're going to cut that to shape. Now to create the actual iconic dragon's teeth of the Siegfried line, good friend of the channel and Michael for, or Hamilton Barca sent me on this awesome little diorama set from Gero model or Gero design and these are all plaster formed dragon's teeth and their supports and as you can see you could do a massive diorama with this set alone but we're just going to take two sections and we're going to cut them to shape so you can see I've cut down the basil wood just to the basic diameters we need so the basic height is just enough that the the support walls are only as high as the concrete supports for our dragon's teeth. So I've just done a little bit of test fitting to make sure everything's um, in place and lines up. And I'm just going to take our hot glue gun here and I'm just going to start gluing down the concrete support lines for the various dragon teeth that we're going to put in place in a few minutes. Now you can see that everything's at an angle and I find when you put um, your scenery at slight angles it just creates a lot of visual interest rather than just having everything at 90 degrees to the viewer. So I've just uh, measured and cut these supports to fit into the corners of our of our base here. And I'm just test fitting our dragon's teeth. So I'm just going to use two. The base is quite small but perfect for 
playing a single vehicle. And once I'm happy with it, I'm just going to take some Gorilla gel type super glue, some of the best glue out there. And I'm just going to glue those down. Again, it's a relatively slow set in glue, so you do have a little bit of work time just to line things up. So now to act as a platform for our M4 Sherman to sit on, I'm just going to take two popsicle sticks that I've cut off the edges to, and I'm just going to measure out the track diameter, if you like, or the distance between the tracks of our Sherman here. And that's going to be the, give me the positioning of this platform. I'm just going to mark it out with a pencil. And then with a little bit of hot glue, I'm going to tack this in place. So the purpose of this uh, little raised platform is just to give a solid point of contact for the tracks of our, of our vehicle here to actually mount onto the base. If you just glue directly onto the plaster or whatever type of groundwork or the sand that you're using, there's a good chance it can just pop off if you have something were to knock off it. In this case, we're actually creating an anchor point for our vehicle to sit on our diorama base. And I'm just using bit of hot glue. I am pushing it down quite hard to ensure that it sits correctly, that doesn't that the hot glue doesn't rise it off the base too much. And with that we're do a little bit more test fitting to make sure everything is perfect and we're happy with it. Again there's a lot of test fitting, a lot of back and forth with diorama bases just to make sure you're happy with things before things are final. Now so with that the way we're gonna start adding our basic groundwork and for that we're gonna use some ready mixed wall filler. I believe in America it's called spackle. And I just prefer using the ready mix stuff, it's a lot easier to use. And I'm just going to start applying this out, bringing it right out to the edges of the base. That's about the same height that covers the, the wooden borders of our base. Now you'll see that I don't put the plaster over our platforms for our tank here. So I'm going to leave those in the bare wood and we'll blend those in later with our next layer of ground effects once our tank's in place. So I'm just uh, dipping my finger in water and blending it out. So you can either use a spatula or a trowel to work with this type of wall filler, or you can just use your finger. It can get quite messy, so do bear that in mind. But uh, it is a very simple uh, product to work with. And also, it doesn't shrink or crack too much once it dries. It's one of the real advantages of using wall filler over different types of clay, I find. So you can see I'm filling up all these different voids. You might have to come in and do a few layers here and there once it dries, but uh, for the most part, you can put this down relatively thick and it will still dry quite well. I'm also going to come in with my uh, with my finger dipped in water and just try to work out, just try to even things out. I don't want to put leave too many um, finger marks in this putty otherwise it'll stand out and I'm also just going to make sure I blend all the different elements in together make sure there's no big gaps between the balsa borders of our base and our various different details so you can see me here just blending in the concrete support for our dragon's teeth into the base here and again just slowly working up this uh, this layer once that's dry I took a very cheap can of spray paint and I spray painted the entire base that seals it and protects everything. And I just used a glossy black cheap spray paint. Especially made sure that I got the balsa wood edges. And now I'm gonna start sealing off our base and our edge work from our balsa wood just to keep that finish nice and clean and intact. And I'm just going to try to do my best to seal this off as best as I can. And then we are ready to move on to the next stage. I'm also just going to cut off some of the excess from our 
masking tape here just by taking a very sharp hobby blade and just running along the edge of our of our base here and I will just literally pair right through that masking tape and it'll give us a very nice clean and neat edge. So with our base all sealed off, now we can start working on building up our colour layers. So first things first, I'm going to start working on the concrete effects for our dragon's teeth here. So we're going to first start off with a bit of Phileho dark grey blue. This is from their mod model colour range, I just put a few drops of flow improver in and I'm just going to start building up this colour. And because we put that glossy black colour down or that darker colour down, it does give us a nice shade la layer to work on and start building up our highlights from there. My other reason too for placing this darker spray paint colour down first is if the plaster or any of the effects were to chip or the paint were to chip, we won't see the white plaster underneath it. It's something that's very jarring if your diorama base were to get damaged and you can see the white plaster underneath it. It just uh, it kind of breaks people's immersion so that's just a fail safe should our diorama base get damaged at some point in the future. I'm going to start mixing in some Phileho model colour light grey into our mix here. Again, leaving some of the darker blue in my cup just to add a bit of continuity of colour here. And again, I'm kind of modelling this on. I do want to keep some of the darker colour showing through. I'm just going to build up this lighter colour here too. So I'm just gradually building up this lighter colour and then as I do each layer I'll add just that little bit more light grey to the mix making it a bit more stronger each time but it's better just to gradually build it up rather going straight to a very bright and light colour even though these concrete dragon's teeth were actually quite a light concrete colour but we, we don't want to go to that straight away we want to build up our shades and shadow layers first just to create some visual interest. I'm just going to add some final highlights of straight light grey. Basically I'm just on the top of concrete in places I want to make a pop. But I want to keep the dark greys showing through as well, I don't want to completely undo that. In a way I'm kind of almost doing panel highlights if you like with these concrete dragon's teeth here.
So you can see there's a lot of back and forth, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a bit monotonous, but if you just be a bit patient and build up the colour, you can get some very nice effects, especially with greys, with, uh, with an airbrush. If you uh, do some nice gradients in the grey scale, you can make things look really visually quite, quite, quite interesting, in fact. So do try to be patient with this and try to build it up. Now, just to add a little bit of weathering to the bases of these dragon's teeth, I'm just taking some very heavily tinned down model colour olive green. And I'm going to build almost like a layer of of mildew or or, or kind of a kind of a, a green kind of scaly like build up. I, again, this is just to break it up a bit, and it's light enough that's somewhat transparent, so it's not going to be too bright. And I also will put a very light glaze over some of the faces of it too, just to break up the uh, the grey a little bit. But I'm just going to really build this green color at the very foundation. So this is a bit of an optional layer because we're going to be putting an actual ground mix on top of this. But I'm just going to take some model colour um, flat earth and I'm just going to spray this into the area where the groundwork is going to go. This isn't totally necessary but again I always believe in redundancy of steps. So should any, anything get knocked off it's not bare plastic or a bare in this case plaster showing through. So I'm just going to put this down a very light layer. I'm not going to go too crazy building it up. So now I'm going to start building up the actual like earth and mud layers and for this we're going to be using the Filejo Diorama effects which is basically a ready mixed mud and dirt mixture. So we're going to start off with their earth effects. So you can see here it's like a textured acrylic paste that's already got pigment in it. And uh, I'm just going to take a cocktail stick here or a coffee stir and I'm going to start building this up. You can put it down pretty thick, however be very careful not to get this product on anything you do not want. It does tend to have a tendency to stain things. So try to keep it only where you want it. Again, I'm just using a cocktail stick there just to blend things in and bed this earth effects down. And I kind of want this to be a churned up earth and mud base, just because um, I feel like you know, you're going to have several divisions worth of soldiers and armor rolling across the German border once they pass the Siegfried line, so it's going to get pretty churned up. So I'm going to put down this earth effects along the edges, so this is where maybe it gets the least traffic, it has to be completely churned up by tank tracks and wheeled vehicles. So I'm going to lay this down first, and I'll just lay it down in sections as you can see, I put a little bit down at a time, and then I start blending. And again, I've been really careful not to get this earth effect up on top of the, the dragon's teeth because it's very hard to wipe it away without leaving any residue or stains on the on your work. So again, be careful with this and be again patient and just slowly build it up. Try not to slap it down in one go or otherwise it'll, it'll get very messy very quick.
So now to create the more turned up mud, we're going to take uh, their black mud color. So again, this is a very dark pigment. And we're going to use this to simulate the muddy paths dug up by tank tracks and treads, or uh, wheels for that matter as well. So you can still see that I'm leaving the wooden support bases for the tracks uh, completely clear. I'm bringing the, the pigment right up alongside it, but I, I still want to make sure that I have a clean and solid surface to glue the tracks down onto once we come to mounting the vehicle. So now I'm just trying to blend in these um, wooden platforms again. I, I, the thing is, I want to make sure that once the fake is in place, there's no visible area where there's no mud. So I'm just kind of trying to blend it in as best I can before we do final blending once the fake is in place. So now I'm just going to put, again, going back to our artifacts, and it's going to place this uh, down the middle of this channel. So obviously this is the area that's either in the middle of an axle, so you know there's nothing there to actually turn it off. I'm just slowly applying this down. And what I'll do on either edge where the darker mud meets the slighter earth effect, I'm gonna I'll actually kind of work them in together to create a slight transition of to almost kind of blend them a little bit, because you can do this with this type of effect. So just kind of blending in the edges here a little bit just to make it um, look a little bit more organic. So now I'm taking some spare tracks and just to add some track imprints. I find with the flavor product, it doesn't really take um, an imprint particularly well. Um, the tracks tend to pull up a lot of the, the mix mixture. So I would let it dry a little bit longer before uh, adding imprints to it in the future. So I'm just gonna take some leaf litter from Scenic Factory. And while the ground effects are still wet, I'm just gonna start sprinkling this down just to add a little bit of visual interest and also try to bring everything together. And I'm just going to take a cocktail stick and very gently tap some of these leaves down just to make sure that they're bedded into the still wet earth effects. So now it's time to mount our M4 onto the base and it's again taking our Gorilla Glue and it's going to glue it directly onto our anchor points here. I've also taken the darker mud colour and added it into the suspension as well, just to ensure 
that they both blend into the same environment. So now it's time we have to blend our darker mud back into this tracks because right now the tank is hovering on the base. So it's not that difficult to do, especially with these ready mix product. You can literally just go straight in and start building in our mud to hide the fact that our, our tank is somewhat floating. So I'm just going to put down small sections at a time, small beads and blend it in. And again, I can actually kind of create ridges to make it look like the tank is sinking or pushing the mud down and up around it. Again, being very careful to build up the mud underneath the track, so about, at both the front and the rear of the vehicle, and to ensure that any visible part of the tank is actually blended into our base here. So everything dry is now it's time to take off our masking and we get that lovely kind of black border basically frames our work really well that's why i like about adding um one stepping our base off the frame a little bit it just helps frame everything and kind of draw a lot of attention to your work and it's also just really kind of visually pleasing to the eye as well i find So now just all that's left is to add the turret and with that our diamond base is done. So guys I really hope you enjoyed this, this was a lot of fun to make and I will be doing more diorama based tutorials in the future. I want to say a big thank you to again Hamaka Barca. so thank you again Michael for supplying me with the, the dragon's teeth, they were fantastic and was very kind of you as always my friend, thank you so much. And a big thank you to all my patrons who support made this video possible. So thank you so much guys, happy modelling and I'll catch you in the next video, bye bye.